The inner strength lasts through every heat and every cold. I want to show you guys the Uchimata. So I'm going to start out with a linear grip. Uh, this is a broken record for 95. Even Andrew, I'm looking at Andrew, I haven't seen him in a while. It's a broken record for Andrew. Never mind Ronnie and where's Chris? Chris is, can't even hear this anymore. But there has to be a way for me to take control of his upper body. If there's no slack in the gi, how the hell am I going to create an angle on the back? It's going to be really, really difficult. So I have to, I have to first take out slack from the gi. Okay, so I have to make sure that there's enough, enough uh, free material so that I can cross grip it and then move laterally to get my overhead. So I'm feeding him the underhook. You get that concept? Um, can I hit the Uchimata off of an underhook? In other words, with my underhook, I can easily, sometimes better. But as a uh, uh, necessary precaution, because oftentimes guys will beat you to the underhook, this is a great option in terms of taking. So he's gonna underhook you, your head on the inside. Just imagine that he starts grabbing my wrist, right? So if he's grabbing my wrist here, excuse <coughs> me, see my hand? I'm gonna pummel it towards towards my chest. And see how his hand becomes weak, his grip becomes weak. So uh, reality, come around for me real quick. There's some of you guys who don't know this, I know Ruben knows this, right? So I'm gonna pummel my hand to the inside and make a proactive grip on his wrist. Now what am I doing? I'm gonna straddle his legs, which basically just means I'm gonna surround his right foot with both of my legs. So I jump in to position here. Okay, we're, we're good so far, everybody? Now to get the throw, what do I do? Usually you can throw with control of the wrist, but there's a risk of him landing on his head. So I'm gonna let go of the wrist and I'm gonna post on the mat. He's gonna do the same. He's gonna post. And then from here, I'm gonna start to kick up, driving my head down until I can take him over the top. And then that's what we call a basic uchimata. So I'll show you it a few more times and I'll, I'll break down the concept a little further in terms of how I'm getting control. So. There's usually two ways to create slack with a linear hand. Left hand's gonna grab his, his, his collar with a linear grip. So what would a linear grip be? This is just right, straight across. A cross grip is self-explanatory. That's my hand going across the plane of his chest. So, the most fundamental way is to grab the actual lapel itself and just pull up. You can easily block that though, right? So if you see, you can kind of see that coming. It's kind of deliberate, so you can be a real, piece of work and give him a swipe job. No one really does it. Not all I gotta do it, but if you can catch his gear here and just lock it out, he's not gonna, shank or he's not gonna move around while he fixes his gear. And when you're doing that, you're attacking him. So quickly, you can swipe, and that gives you enough room to make the grip, move, take your overhook, head on the inside, right? Grabbing my wrist, we can imagine that's probably what he's gonna wanna do. So take a proactive grip by pulling your hand to the inside and then gripping his wrist. Straddle by stepping in, surrounding his one foot with both of my feet, and I'm kicking. Taking top position. I'm not breaking down the control points on the ground, it's very wide, you never land this way, but this is where you're gonna stop, right on top. Okay, now if you're, if you're brand new like everyone is here, you might land in your partner's groin, so you have to be aware of that. So I want you to make sure that you don't come down with your leg and knee. So if I'm here, try not to come down. See how I'm kind of floating and I'm weary of my left knee. Because you can bring it down like this. So make sure that you're weary of that and come down nice and safe so not to hurt the person's groin at all. Another thing you can do that judo players do is they roll over the top. So you can, you can go here, straddle, throw up, and kind of roll your body over the top. We would never do that in a real fight, right? Or never in a jiu-jitsu match, it's crazy. But judo guys do it because they get their e and what is it called? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a way for them to just get their points because they don't care if they end up on their back. They get, they get points for that throw. Um, but it also stops you from landing on the guy's room. So you can drill it that way if you like, right? So you can for the sake of judo. You can straddle and come over the top. Or you can, uh, you can do this bit that I think is Far more fight realistic with jiu-jitsu. And just watch your knee. Just like that. Let's get it on three guys. One, two, three.